We are going to look at the second sample that we are proposing to enable a WSRP producer in SharePoint. This sample has two main components. The first one is uh, an ASP.NET application which actually connects to SharePoint using web services and retrieves a list of your web part and then expose the web part in an ASP.NET page. This ASP.NET page is then consumed by the WSRP producer which, which is going to do the work to expose the content for, uh, for remote portlets. So let's look at the configuration and the installation. So you first run the grid view setup which will install the ASP.NET application. First you have to create on IIS uh, an empty website on which we will install this application. So let's install this one here. So what you can do now is just test the first piece that you have installed. To do that you just navigate to the website where you just installed uh, the grid view component and as you can see it displays uh, by default the first web part that you have pre-configured uh, in your project. So here it's the announcement web part. So we will see how the WSRP producer then reuse this list to make it available as a remote portlet. So the next thing I need, I need to do now is to install the WSRP producer. Let's run the setup. So once again, I will install the WSRP producer, which is actually a web service on the pre-existing uh, website that I have already created in IIS. I just install it here and then finish the installation. So the WSRP producer is being installed. If you want to look at how is configured the list of available web parts uh, to the WSRP consumer, you can go to the Visual Studio solution. And in the Visual Studio solution, you look at the web part info.xml. This is where basically you define the configuration and the list of the web parts you want to make available to the WSRP consumer. So here we have defined the announcement web part with some parameters and you can for example define if you want to get all the content of the list or if you want to get only a partial list and we have defined also another web part which is the links web part. With that we can now switch to the web to the BEA WebLogic portal configuration and create a new portlet. So we will just add a new portlet. Let's call it sample2. It's a remote portlet. We will give the WSDL of the WSRP producer. Here we go. And then we ask to retrieve the available portlets. So here we have two portlets only because these are the web parts we have made available. I will use again the announcement web part and then I need to use the handle here which is the, the handle of the BEA configuration. This one is called grid view producer here. I create my portlet. So now I can test my portlet. So to do that, I'm going to go to the home page of the portal and just include the portlet and simply run the portal. Okay. So as you can see, the portlet appears directly uh, within the, the design of the portal. And interesting things you can do with this sample is, for example, if you go back to the grid view and edit the configuration of the grid, for example, I'm just going to change the color and the theme. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going back to the BEA portal server and just refresh the page to see the change. 
and here you go the WSRP producer then exposes a new user interface and uh, of course the user, in the user interface is picked up by the, 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 the BEA portal. So that's one of the interesting aspects of the second sample with this uh, decoupled architecture. It gives you more flexibility on the UI.